about gaming addiction. Um, gaming addiction is a reality. Um, I've already had a client that's got a gaming addiction problem before. Um, so um, it's something to explore, it's something to look into, it's something to read on. There's a lot of stuff on the internet. But be specific when you type in gaming addiction, type in video game addiction, because when you do gaming addiction, um, I should put video there actually, um, it also can give you to online gambling, like online games where they gamble. So, so this is specifically not on the gambling one. Um, gambling is a totally different, different field and a different sort of sort of thing. So, I just want to sort of challenge you a bit to go and read on about this, and um, um, it's a reality. So here we go. Um, sorry that it's going to be a bit of death by PowerPoint this morning, because there's a lot of info about it. Um, so first of all, it's still not recognised as a diagnosable disorder. So, so it's not a disorder yet. It's not recognised. So, so it's not in the, the um, DM5, um, which is the mental health disorder uh, called the, the disorder bible, where all the disorders are in. Um, so it's not in that that one, um, but um, it's still not a recognisable disorder. But video game addiction is a huge problem for many in the world we live in. Um, it is interesting to note that recent studies found that 6 to 15 percent of all gamers show signs of addiction. So, so there's a lot of gamers that actually show signs of addiction, and it's actually easy to get addicted to a game. Um, those of you that I mean, we get all these little silly games on our on our phones: um, Clash of Clans, uh, Farmville. Um, uh, Candy Crush, um, those sort of games. Um, you start playing them and playing them and, and then you get to a level where you actually start to have to buy, spend money to buy stuff, buy buy gems or buy stuff to, to actually build them. And, and before you know it, you spend a fortune on a virtual world. You spend a fortune on building a farm. <laughs> um, I, I know of people that in conferences actually leave the conference for a moment to actually go and harvest because it's harvest time and if they don't harvest within an hour or so the crops will die so so this is a reality this is and i'm not talking about the everyday school kid i'm talking about qualified adults who's graduated who's in professional jobs who actually will leave a room to go and harvest um so so it's sort of becoming we're living in a virtual world more and more and um, our dreams Obviously, we're living our dreams a bit more virtually out, like having a, a farm. Those of you who wanted a farm. But they don't spend their money doing this, do they? You they do. spend their own money. Yeah, you, you, you get credits, like you get points, but if you buy certain, let's say, you need 20 coins for your crop to grow within yes. 10 seconds. Yes. So you spend your coins. Yes. But then you're out of coins, and then you just go and purchase more coins. So, you you it online. so yeah. Or with Clash of Clans, you can, because sometimes if you build, this, uh, let's say build a wall, yeah. it might take uh, 48 hours for the wall to be finished. But when you spend X amount of crystals, um, the wall will be finished in two seconds. Oh. So then you then it, you buy crystals. And you don't realize because it's hooked up to your credit card. So, so you oh. don't, yeah, so it's a, it's a. Is that real? Yeah, oh. so that's why when you go into apps, it will say, it's a free app, but it will say in-app purchases. Yeah. So in-app purchases, so it's like all these games that advertise like Clash of Clans or um, there's a new, that, that Arnold Schwarzenegger one where they advertise the game on, on TV. So, so it, is, it is becoming a reality. I, mean, um, I play the games till, till sometimes when I'm bored I just download one of them, play it for a while and then when I get to a level where I have to wait 10, 11 hours for a thing to do, I delete the game. Yeah. Um, because then it's like okay fine I've reached this I'm not really addicted to this um, so I, I did enjoy Candy Crush um, but um, it's starting to become really addictive it's really really addictive you like play it everywhere you actually just think I'm gonna play Candy Crush so so that's really really addictive games and it's on your phone you can do it anytime so but I'm talking yeah. match three and do all that and get a certain number of cards 
to build a fence for the zebras and things like that. Oh. So, but then you get then you get your more more online games and and this is a more serious one is when you get online and you can play multiple online games. Mm -hmm. So where you play with other people, so you form teams of other people and. Oh. and um, I think World of Warcraft, yeah. those sort of games oh God, are so Grand Theft Auto. Put other people join yeah. in on the game. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes. All so, over the world. So and, and people oh, get addicted yes. to this. So yes. so it's a reality. Yep. Yep. Um, the excessive amount of time that gamers spend playing games is very disruptive when it comes to schoolwork, work life, and also social life. So school for kids, work life for adults, yeah. and then also. Social also your social life so people won't go I won't go on oh, this is my social world now I I'm social with whoever sits in China and America yeah. and whoever and we play together we're a team but we never meet we chat online we talk online but you know the social part of what we normally do is not there and they call um, them friends yeah and they call them their friends and stuff what's interesting also and I didn't put it in this PowerPoint or, or in this research thing is that Maggie Dent wrote um, uh, one of the reasons why boys, especially boys, are so into gaming um, is that um, in the past we used to be hunters and gatherers and women are the gatherers, men are the hunters um, and now we live in a world where um, we're not that anymore. Uh, boys are not really recognized as men. We don't have rituals. We don't have those coming to age ceremonies. We but but in the gaming world, the boy becomes the hunter. Um, he becomes the adventurer. Yeah. Um, in the past, kids would go out with their dads and have adventures. They go fishing. They go biking. They go camping. We in the modern life world we live in, we don't do that. Um, so and some don't have dads. Some, and, and there's such a large amount of kids who don't have dads, single, single moms or, or that sort of thing. So, so the kid lives his, at, his sense for adventure, which is built into all boys, uh, lives that out in the gaming, gaming world. Um, so that's just the interesting thing that I read, read um, that Maggie Dent wrote in her book called what is behind, what is, What's Happening to Our Boys is the name of the book. And um, in that book, she discussed the gaming issue and why boys, especially, are so into gaming. We also get girls into gaming. Um, so don't just stereotype and say that boys play games, girls don't play games. They do play games. Um, but um, be careful not to stereotype um, that area. But gaming is a reality. That's Maggie Jean, is it? Uh, Dent. D E N T. Dent. Dent. Okay. Maggie Dent. Um, there is a high risk of addiction when it comes to online games. So the online games are a higher risk mm -hmm. than your normal games. Okay. And does this include, um, is it the Xbox where they mm -hmm. can go join online? Into people that online sort of stuff, yeah. I'm not only talking about computer games, no. I'm now, now I'm talking about the virtual world. Right, the yes. Xbox, so the, that the is that because PlayStation. I have, um, I have a friend that's um, yeah. son is doing this and he's like 16 yeah, yeah, yeah. and he's on it all night. Yeah, all with night. People all from all they over don't, the they world. Don't, yeah, yeah. Um, it's scary to yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. In, yeah. in South Africa, I actually, um, actually worked with a family. Um, the boy, the little kid was nine years old, and they would a very well off family. I'm not, and when I'm talking about this family, I'm talking about the kids being dropped off at school in a limousine. So he's being dropped off, nine-year-old boy, dropped off in a limousine. Um, parents have heaps and heaps of money, don't know what to do with all their cash. Um, and then on a Friday night, um, off Friday afternoon after school, they were dropping off at the. Um, uh, internet cafe mm. and they'll leave him there and pick him up Saturday afternoon about 1. Oh, Friday night? They'll drop him off. He'll play right through the night till Saturday afternoon oh. at 1. He'll be in the, the, the all night um, that's the days when we still had internet cafes. Yes. Um, I don't. I think that's a bit of a, a dying thing too. We don't really get yeah, don't internet that, cafes. I haven't seen that really in Australia a lot. But in South Africa, we have quite I a few. I see them a lot. Yeah, yeah. I, haven't seen them for a long time, I think right? I think more and more people have access to computers and stuff in their own homes. Yes. Um, but um, yeah, so so this was a nine-year-old kid was dropped off, played games for 24 hours non-stop. Um, next day, dad, mom, and dad pick him up. Oh my. my concern is what can happen to this kid overnight. Oh. What can? But okay, that is um, that is another issue. But 
but that is the sort of stuff people do. Um, our internet gaming our become the nannies. Um, they yes. become the, the, the it's people that. It's interesting that, that fewer and fewer um, uh, young people watch TV. Um, they what they do this yep. or they do online movies and yep. stuff like yes, that. So yes, TV yes. programs and stuff is is getting fewer and fewer being watched. But it's more like the Netflix and that. Yes. We go straight to the movies. Oh, okay. Goodness. There's a high risk when it comes to online games, especially multiplayer games. So the multiplayer games, the multiplayer game is a game where there's a few people. Um, um, and uh, I think World of Warcraft is one of them. Um, I'm not really that good at games. Um, I've got two boys who play games, but um, they're not allowed to play online, and they are not they're not allowed to play any violent games. Right. So they. And yeah. your boys are older. Yes. 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 So, yes. Yeah. Wow. Yes, yes. um, I know. I know. Um, um, yeah. Especially with the twenty-one year old, the control is not not so much there anymore, but. Um, I, I believe that the foundation is there. Yes. Um, it's, it's more into uh, into racing games, yeah, that sort yeah, of games, yeah. than shooting and killing games. Yeah, oh, definitely, um, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Thing where they build their own car. Yeah. And the more and and the more you race, the more money you get, the more you can spend on your car, that yeah. sort of stuff. Yeah. Mm. Um, okay, and then also further, it says that the gaming need industry need to be explored because it's it's not as highly regulated as others like mm. gaming in the sense of gambling, gambling um, yeah. those sort of industries are, are higher regulated mm. where uh, with the, the gaming one it's not as regulated so mm. it doesn't really inform consumers should be informed of the risk of addiction when playing online games so so it's not actually always informing the people that this can lead to addiction Absolutely. Um, so, um, so but there needs to be a more of a social responsibility mm. in regard to gaming um, gaming is a reality mm -hmm. and the more and more we live in this virtual world the more and more we get things like um, social phobias people withdrawing from community mm -hmm. um, it's a, I mean we're living on, on, a, on, a, on in, a, in a real virtual world actually now mm -hmm. um, dating online yeah. um, we don't we don't have that. we don't have like the old old times matchmakers yeah. well, I, I went I went to um, I went to a conference by um, a futurist, and he discussed it. He says that the the age-old job of matchmaker is coming back, because there's a long time when there weren't really matchmakers, um, but now there's a need for matchmakers again, and the matchmaker is more the online matching gaming match matchmaker type of programs um, to We've get got people. Ones for professional people only. Professional Actually, people. There's professional people. There's yeah. for Christians. There's for whatever mm. you want to go. It, it's yeah. like this. So, um, and I know of quite a few people that actually met online, got yeah. married, oh, are very happy. So, and so, yeah. so that's is sort of the the, the trend yeah. now. Yeah. Okay. But that's I, I, because you're putting in what you like and what you don't. What like you like and what you, and, and then you and then some people put a photo when they were like 15 oh, and not another oh. 55 or whatever. <laughs> but but um, like yeah, fish. as if they're never going to meet each other and the person yes. will realize you like you don't look like your photo. Um, but yeah, so, so we're living in a virtual world and we need to recognize it and with mm. this new challenges come up and um, also as parents we need to be aware of this and also as counselors we need to be aware of this mm. because this is a reality, you will get clients addicted to this or you will be, especially work with relationships, um, it will have a huge impact on relationships. I was thinking about that from our <coughs> workshop last week when we um, did the relationships and things and, and how we said it should be educated at school, we should be educated. Yes way before we get to yeah. the stage of choosing partners and this marriage, needs yeah. to be brought out again doesn't yeah. it yeah. this the addiction we've been mm -hmm. talking about alcohol we're talking about cigarettes and talking yeah. about drugs yeah. but these could be just as risky and just yeah. as bad yeah i will show you later what what influences is on the brain yeah. um, oh. so, yeah, so, okay symptoms there are quite a few symptoms of, of gaming addiction so we have few symptoms of someone that's addicted to gaming he started by stating that a person who is addicted to gaming find it difficult I uh, find it difficult um, to do activities other than gaming. So they find it difficult to do anything else but gaming. So um, they've got this urge, I want to play the game, um, you invite them to something now, I can't go, or they go and they're very grumpy, because the whole time their whole mind is on gaming. Yeah. Um, I know people that's really, really grumpy, 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 and then you go somewhere else, oh, they've got an Xbox, and then they stop playing, and then suddenly this person's night is made, because there's gaming happening. 
Um, so that this is a reality. So a person that's addicted to gaming struggle to do any other activity than gaming. That's all that's they want to do. Any other addiction, yeah, that's all they want to do. Okay. Um, some of the major signs of video game addiction is that the person who suffers gaming feels compelled to play games more and more. The urge to play becomes stronger and their possibility to resist playing games become more and more. So they cannot resist. They just want to, it's just, I have to play games, I have to do this, this is me, this is, and they find excuses to do this, like, I need to relax, this relaxes me, or this, the, their stories, it's like, why must you do that? I got not with a cigarette or drink. Same story like that, is I need a cigarette before I go to bed, um, I need to play a game before I go to bed, but the problem is, it works on your mind. So you can't go, go your, your mind doesn't switch off because of the screen time is not good before bedtime. Yes. And now they play these action games and it's not only a few minutes, it's hours and hours and hours. They can play right through the night with and no issue. And when you do get them off, like my son for example, he has a cut off time at seven, he still won't get to bed till one. Right, and in, in many cases this addiction has also an influence on the physical and mental health and personal hygiene. Mental health, physical, and personal hygiene. It was interesting once here at college, we had a gaming competition, and all the gamers came into a room on the other side. Um, I could only walk up to the door because of the, the really bad smell, and I turned around. I didn't go in and looked at this gaming competition oh. because there were people coming from all over, and they really smelled bad. And it did all. And I can say, my son, he's going to be forced to have, get off his game and have a shower. They don't do it. Okay. Do they eat? No. There's, a, there's, no. A good, there's a good one, an episode on the Big Bang Theory, and they got Penny onto this gaming thing, and her her thing, her whole demeanour, her whole personality changed. Usually, she's an up, up, a bright, bubbly girl going off to work, being responsible, and everything. They got her onto this game, and she just. Her hair was unkept. Wow. Her apartment yeah. became a mess, and a star driver flying into another apartment. I know, I know of a guy that went to our gym. Um, really active, very, very into game, into gym. He was really, really into gym, but he also studied computer gaming, running games. And then I ran into his training partner one day and said, "Hi, how are you guys doing? Still doing gym and whatever?" And he says, "No, I'm training alone." because he um, he's just playing games. Mm -hmm. So he's just playing games. It's like, he, he's not going to gym anymore. He's actually not even going to class anymore. He's just playing games. That's it. Okay, so it's a reality. All right, further according to Ry Cornell, um, a person that is addicted to video gaming can be irritable, anxious, miserable when he or she is unable to play the video games, the person addicted to video games may also experience the following symptoms. Drastic weight gain or loss. There's no exercise, so all they do is they sit. They either sit and eat, or they don't eat at all. Drastic weight gain loss. There's no exercise, there's or no movement. All day, and then they go and hit the cupboard at There's no movement, no physical movement. Right, issues with sleep patterns because they don't sleep. Uh, video game sleep addicts, video game sleep addicts have huge sleep disruptions, even sleep deprivation. There's sleep disruptions, sleep deprivation. They will cheat, they will hide stuff under blankets as long as they can play their game. <laughs> Typical, it's the same symptoms we get with a person that's addicted to alcohol. They'll hide it. They'll yes, yes. Okay. Uh, drastic mood changes. Mood changes, they will become aggressive um, and sometimes even the game will influence that because if it's a really aggressive game, sometimes they will. Um, one of my, uh, my wife's cousins, extremely intelligent guy, extremely like, um, you know, doctorate level sort of person, started playing a game, Grand Theft Auto, he played this game, he lives in London, enjoyed the game. And then one day he was driving and for a moment he felt like he was in the game and then he got home and he's like, no, this is nonsense and he actually threw away the game because he said for a moment while I was driving he felt like he's in the game. Oh. Um, so so yeah. he is he's intelligent enough to yeah. say, hey, here's a problem, I need to get rid of this. But a lot of people are so far into this that they can't say, I'm going to stop this, they cannot stop this. 
Um, drastic mood change, big changes in their social lives and avoidance of family and friends. I don't want to see people, I don't want to go anywhere because I just want to play my game. And, uh, and if you confront them and say, you need friends, it's like, I've got lots of friends, mom. Yes. Uh, I've, got, I've got Warren in America and I've got Wong in, in China and I've got, but, but communication, physical contact, physical people is no longer there. And they don't want it because they live in this virtual world. Everything is perfect. Mm -hmm. I'm the captain of my team. I can do what yeah. I want. Yeah. I'm happy. I'm great. And in the world out there, I'm a failure. Yes. So for, uh, for children being bullied and things that would be ideal they for go to, to <coughs> resolve to this and that. They, they go that to they're, that. They, they're they, superior. They get their alter ego name. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe they can even be, maybe in virtual world, they even the leader of the team put the bullies in. Um, you know those sort of things. I, I'm the captain. I'm great. I'm I'm in charge. Um, we're the, the, like my son has the disability, so he has a speech problem with it. But I mean, no one sees him. No, he no one knows. He can say yes. My speech. I am 21. My speech is like this because I'm autistic. Do you know what that means? And then after that's fine. So to them, he's just Jamie who plays the games. Plays games. It's like it's so different. It's, it, you're not judged on looks no. because you create. You can even create your your avatar, your figure. Yep. It can be the strong guy. It can be a good-looking person. Um, whatever. It's like well, I can kick. They can kick people off the team. So if you don't behave, I'm going to kick you off. So they can be quite superior yeah. with them. So yeah. yeah, they play games, then turn up for meals. Um, the poor work, poor academic performance. Um, I know someone that will actually call in sick at work and play games all day than to go to work. That's a lot of stuff. Okay. Then we've got this thing called dopamine. Let's go into the brain. Dopamine is one of the most amazing things that our brain, it's one of our great stuff in our brain. So this is the happy guy. <laughs> this is the, the hormone that makes us feel happy. Okay. Um, what dopamine does, it's um, um, convinced, um, some researchers are convinced that dopamine play a role in the development of video, video game addiction disorder. As a neurotransmitter, dopamine is a major role player in the reward system of the brain. So it's also a role player when it comes to problem solving, attention, memory. The, the hormone dop dopamine is released during pleasure activities, for example, eating, using drugs, watching pornography. Which is the other addiction you've talked about too. So, they get the same feeling watching porn as what they get actually as playing computer games. It's the same sort of thing. Yeah. It's the same high, it's the same whatever. Okay, so this heightened release of dopamine may be a factor that contributes to getting an getting you addicted to gaming because the brain associates playing games with increased dopamine levels. It is very difficult for a person addicted to gaming to stop this behavior because it's a feeling. Yes. It's almost like adrenaline, adrenaline like rush. Adrenaline. Happy, I'm happy. So I play my game. The moment you, you, I mean, your body and your brain it addicts, um, adapts to your, your circumstances. So the moment you go and sit in front of your computer, it already starts to to release dopamine in your body. So it's a natural drug because it's created in your body. I must be like that when I do in my assessments because I don't want to stop. Yeah, <laughs> I get like that. And I'm thinking, oh, well, that's... Um, <laughs> athletes, we get that too. I'm yeah. thinking eating. They might have a problem well, eating. Yeah. And the athletes that are the proper, you know, the ones yeah. that do the marathons. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's also it's some sexual addiction. Yeah. 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 also some sexual addiction. Yes. also all those sorts of stuff. Right. And that's why I feel like when someone asks me why do I study so much, it's because this is my adrenaline yes, that's rush. What you love. Yes, you know? yes, yes. Um, so yeah. I said it because I wasn't. Oh, so right. it really is. There's, so, there's yeah. just that's um, the chemical signal for dopamine. Um, porn and dopamine, digital addiction and dopamine. There's a title. There's a link between the two. Um, so yeah, just for interest's sake. So basically, one way of treating gaming addiction, it would be almost the same way as you'll treat someone with. A sexual or a porn addiction or an eating disorder or so when you say like porn addiction 
Does that mean that they, they just can't stop watching? They can't stop like watching that. it. Yeah. Watching same. It, yeah. Oh. Same like people can't stop playing games. Yes. They, they can't, can't stop, stop watching, watching it. it. And you've also got the. Um, Gym junkies, the ones that come same story. Yeah, I've heard of that. Same story. Getting really addicted to, getting addicted to gym, yeah. to health, to whatever. Yes. So those. Well, all anything that's an addiction. Really addiction, is yeah. That and this is part of that. Is is the it's happy stuff that, being yes. released in yeah. your body? Yep. Yeah. It's what giving you happiness. Giving you, and that makes you happy. There's an example of the So, physical injury. A person that played video games for a very long. I'm talking about a very long time, not like once in a while. Time has also the risk of physical injury, except a while ago when, I don't know when, when you guys remembered when the Wii came out. Oh, yes. Wii. We yes. had those the physical ones. Was was awesome. Awesome. Was but all sorts of stuff tennis, bowling, cricket, Dancing. whatever. You oh, had yes. these little, little controller things. Yeah. And I, s I think that here was the most injuries that December was Wii related injuries because the, um, the people will hit each other <laughs> with the thing. Or it will go oh, flying. Is, at least it was physical. Yeah, it, it was yeah. physical, but so many TVs got broken because the controller actually flies out of someone's hand, yeah. hit the TV. So, so that year, the most injuries was because of we. But um, I'm talking about some of these injuries include, which they call video gamers' thumb, um, and then <laughs> in tendonitis. Yeah. We've so that's how they play it. And yeah, like, oh, it's a, it's basically. But then they use button. these fingers for the back buttons so, or something. No, well, my grandchildren, though, they build things or something on there. The Minecraft is or something. Yeah, oh, yeah, Minecraft or like houses right or something like that. Yeah. And is right that right. the same thing yeah. still? The same sort of thing, yeah. Because yeah. I would say they need really to do Because they just yeah. use a bit of. Okay, then you may also get something. Nintendonitis from it actually got from the word Nintendo. Yes. It creates long term issues of hands, arms of the gamer. Other problems may include fatigue, pain, weakness, uh, bursitis, which is an inflammation condition. Some video game ad addicts also suffer from tendonitis and carpal tunnel syndrome. Re research also discovered that some gaming addicts can develop severe and aggressive behavior that is uncontrollable. So there's a lot of physical stuff that can happen to a gamer. And again, this is not your normal playing a game, one game now and then or whatever this is severe this is we're not talking about all night hours, gaming yes. hours and hours and hours the whole weekend because i know of people that will game the whole weekend so they come home from work and then they'll game right through till sunday night like um, that's just as in adults adults so do they have no family life oh, they, they have no family life they've got family yeah but they don't they've got wives and children but oh they yeah so obviously can you can Wow. You can think that can create another issue, yes. because oh that creates God. family issues. So, oh, I've got no time. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know we, we, uh, how they get time. But no. Treatment is treatment for this addiction is the same as for other behavior addictions. Counseling and behavior modification techniques are some of the most effective ways to deal with compulsive gaming for rehabilitation. So, the guy that we use a lot in this one is CBT because we need to find out what's the feeling they get while playing the game. Mm -hmm. The do dopamine thing. What do you yes. get? What do you experience? What do you, what's happening in your body? Those sort of stuff you need to be, be, you need to know that. And, and that's stuff that you need to sort of also with your clients help find, have to find to find alternatives to. Mm -hmm. Because taking it away, it's like you, this guy's addicted. You can't just take it away. There'll be withdrawal symptoms. So yes. there needs to be something you can do to actually replace this. Mm. I've just done that. Um, I got my son to join the gym. He still has to have someone go with him. But I went and bought the um, world tickets. So movie world. Oh, okay. Yes. See world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then someone still takes like, them. Yes. Well, I got them both my boys. Oh, One's okay. more addicted than the other. Yeah. But yeah. And then my foster daughter and that, my seven year old. So now, I can be right, it's nice day, out. Mm. And it doesn't cost me now that I've bought it, instead of having to put money into different activities all the time. Mm. Uh, and you're fishing. Mm. So there's a lot of stuff happening. You know, in China, they actually have um, rehabs now, the gaming, the children. They go live in a rehab place, the gaming, in China, where they do exercise now and all that to get away from the games and meet other kids. And I think there's also Facebook rehab now, isn't there? I've heard. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. how, though? I, I can understand how they're getting into it because parents are so busy and I guess that's their way of, you know, I'll, I'll go and do that and give you some... Yeah, it, get, I don't know. I don't it's, know again, it's again the nanny. Uh, individual yes. counselling, okay, that's one way to do it, is individual counselling. This form of counselling helps the video game addict to address the various issues and also help them to reduce their compulsions to play. Mm. So this helps them to reduce their, their playing compulsions. Uh, so he's been on his <laughs> <laughs> Feed me <laughs> Um, so that's one thing. Did you hear that, Corinne? Sorry? Are <laughs> you feeding your horses? <laughs> yeah, feeding horses, yeah. Or I'm... Um, it's ignoring us. <laughs> yeah. So oh. individual, can this form of counselling, so you sit with the person. You talk. Yeah. Lots of talking happening there. Um, well, so how would you do that if they, they have that addiction, so they might have a bit of that um, agitation because they've had to come off the game to come to you? Okay. So they'll be looking in the air, they really yeah, won't, they just want this time to be over. Yeah, or an alcoholic or anything, mm. like that would probably be the same, wouldn't they? they yeah, yeah. I think I'm also thinking with the gaming a lot of the time it will be more younger, like even in their 20s and yeah. 30s, but I'm yeah, talking yeah, about, yeah. What saying about you know, men with families mm. and everything, which is, women, do women get into this very much as mainly male? No, you they see they would. Women do get into it. My daughter's. Yeah, but they're single, daughter. aren't they? They're all young girls. Most yeah. of the girls are the ones that will get on the um, daddy too. chatting she sites. Single, but she's still they get on the chatting day. sites. More, I think, girls would. So which one? Chatting sites? No, my daughter's into this summer, summoning thing. Um, summoning. She's, she, and how I know, she brought the app, well, the app is free, but it's connected mm. to my phone, so it's on my phone. Oh. Okay, yeah. And so that's how they get to try and get me into it. Not, not <laughs> right, so, so lots of individual counselling happening there. That's, that would be one of our first steps. Also, which is important that we need to do, <coughs> is we'll have uh, behaviour modification techniques. So behaviour modification techniques, this helps the video gaming addicts to recognise where they are at the, what's the trigger points. And for them to engage in excessive gaming and also help them to identify healthier alternatives. So this is almost like that behavior change program things we're talking about um, in, in the units we're talking about at this stage. So, so basically what you need to do with this one is you need to look at the trigger points. So what makes you feel like I want to play this game? Mm. I have to play this game. I have to do this now. What are the, the triggers? Um, why? That sort of stuff. And how they and, got to that? How did they get on gaming? Yeah. And then they have to look at healthier alternatives. So what sort of healthier alternatives can you find? So you're sitting with your gamer and you're asking your gamer, what can I do? So like I said, the, uh, the tickets to go to the world. Yeah. Game. So they're still getting out, they're getting on rides or whatever else. Yeah. But it's outside. Or exactly. the gym. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but the thing is not everyone's into gym. No, no. Okay, so but... I'm using them as an example. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. sort of yeah. stuff. Things okay. that they like. Yeah. I suppose you would have to um, you know, find out what they like yeah. Yeah. Things yeah. And, yeah. and introduce that to them. Yeah. yeah. You know, like a little bit of time, you know, this sort of maybe start. Yeah, you need to. Um, it, yeah. it, it works like CBT, challenging, yeah. challenge Can't behavior, challenge it. thought, challenge yeah. looking at looking at um, consequences yes. of your yes. behaviour, that sort of thing. So there's a lot of CBT happening yeah. mm -hmm. in this sort of thing. Okay. Then the other thing is family therapy. Um, it's not common occurrence for adults. So when you've got an adult that's addicted to gaming, they don't really do family therapy. Um, although I would suggest, yes, if it's a dad with kids and, and, a, and a wife, mm -hmm. I'd say, yes, let's do some sessions of family therapy. I'll work with you, but sometimes I will also want to work with the family. Mm -hmm. um, and that's all together. All together, yeah. So we've got a session together just to discuss what's happening, um, yes. how they feel, how they experience yeah. stuff, that sort of stuff. And if, they're, if they're expressing yeah. that they're doing it as often as what they say they're yeah, doing, yeah, yeah. You know, you can bring them and how does, the, how does that influence the kids? Like, how does it influence? Um, I wouldn't say that's a weekly thing, I'd say what, maybe once a month. I would yes. weekly for the first, let's say, three weeks, I'll work with, with the adult, and then once I'll have a family yes. session. Yes. Yeah. But the family therapy sessions are more actually there for kids. So one okay. younger younger people, ad, adoles adolescents and kids that's addicted. Yep. So the family sessions are more. It's Involved it's more done with them, them in yep. those sessions than one on ones, mm -hmm. uh, where mom, dad, and siblings and everyone's involved. Mm -hmm. 
or sometimes just mom and dad's involved and we, we they talk to, talk about the issue together as a, as a group um, so that's um, so there's different types of um, of therapies and, and then also um, I haven't put it on there but there's also a therapy um, al almost with um, like with drugs is where they go into rehab so there's a sort of a rehab for like gaming. I said, hmm? Like I said, China's got the rehab. Yeah. The so children in that now to get on them. So you have to go to rehab. So when it's actually so 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 uncontrollable and no nothing's working, the person needs to go to some sort of rehab program. Mm -hmm. So gaming I gaming addiction is a reality. Gaming addiction is with us and I don't see that actually stopping very quickly. I actually see that increasing. Um, because it's getting more and more and more. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is what gaming is about. Yeah. What about contracting, as you were saying, like we said, you know, or how about just starting from an hour, so you can write up a contract saying, okay, well in this contract, there's going to be an hour, you're going to get off and go for a walk, or, you know, whatever you discuss with but the It depends client. on the level of, I was going to say, depends the on the level of, 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 yeah. of, of addiction. Mm -hmm. Some people will say, uh, you, I'll sign the contract if you want to keep yeah, <laughs> the either. contract. No. Yeah, but it still um, could be something you put yeah. in. Mm -hmm. so, so, but that sort of stuff can work with um, family therapy when you have, especially when you have kids smaller persons involved. Uh, adult also, like I'm an adult, I'm not going to keep Well, that's this. what I wanted to bring it up, yeah. actually, when you had the family there. So, yeah. All right. Anything else? But um, that's it. That's yeah. I, I just wonder, as a, it's not for me, but I, this friend of my mm. daughter's whose son, we're all very concerned about, you know, yeah. um, because they are relationship problems, you know, the father's, um, it's a DV case again and things like this. And this young boy stays on there all night. We yeah. were there yesterday, um, and she said to me, she said um, um, he was on all night until six o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So I've taken the power cords off him now. Yeah. And then he'll just grab something of hers in retaliation and say, well, how does that feel to you, you know? Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Because it's a, probably a withdrawal type of thing back yeah. then. Yeah, it's also addiction, but, yeah. Yeah, and mm -hmm. you know, Sebastian being a male, he said, oh, he said, um, you know, you're going to have to take control or do something like that. And I said, I don't know how to go about that one yeah. in that case. How old would John? 16. And he's a lovely, lovely, lovely young man. Get on the, get I on had him at our place on Sunday. Yeah. 